This is a demo of our platform Corda. So in this demo, we're going to show you some of the traditional benefits of blockchain uh, solutions, like the assurance that whenever two parties share a fact, they see the exact same version of that fact, the ability to transact without intermediaries, the ability to instantly exchange values, value between parties. Um, but in this demo, we'll also be highlighting some of the unique features of Corda, which address some of the problems that traditional blockchains face. Um, one of them being privacy. So in traditional blockchains, everyone sees everything. In Corda, data is only distributed on a need-to-know basis. Um, but despite this privacy, everyone transacts in a single global network, so assets can move between these without becoming trapped. Um, and on this network, uh, you're dealing with well-known counterparties. You know exactly who you're dealing with when you make legal agreements. Um, the finality of transactions is instant, so there's no need to wait to check whether a transaction has been confirmed or not. And finally, you can model some very complex flows, so stuff like DVP or the example we're going to show you today, which is letter of credit. So what is a letter of credit? Well, it's one of the first use cases that's going to go into production on the Corda platform. And it's basically a, uh, a legal contract that prevents the issues of trust in buyer-seller relationships. So if you think of a buyer and a seller, perhaps in different countries who want to trade, well, if they don't know each other, there's going to be a trust issue there. The seller won't want to send the goods first and the buyer won't want to send the money first. Um, so instead of not trading at all, what they'll do is they'll go via their banks. So instead of the seller being paid by the buyer directly, the seller will be paid by its bank. It will then be paid off by the buyer's bank, who will then be paid off by the buyer. And vice versa, the title to the goods won't move directly from the seller to the buyer. The title of the goods will be first transferred from the seller to its bank. Um, and then the seller's bank will transfer the title to the goods to the buyer's bank. And then finally, the buyer's bank will transfer the title to those goods to the buyer. So the trade is completed, but using the banks as intermediaries, so there's no trust issues. So we have here a view of the full quarter network. And then if we click here, we can slim down the network map to just the nodes relevant to our use case. That will be four nodes. So we have the seller here in Shenzhen, Lokmar Exporters. We have the seller's bank, Shenzhen State Bank. We have the buyer in the UK, Analog Importers. And we have the buyer's bank, First Bank of London. You can see that all these nodes are on the same global network. Um, so they can all transact directly with each other. So there's no islands of assets or trapped assets. You can also see that all the nodes are aware of each other through this dynamic signed document called the network map, which tells nodes about the other nodes on the network, who they are, how they can be contacted. Um, and it's possible to create this network map because before joining a quarter network, you go through a KYC process. Um, and after this KYC process, each node gets a certificate. Um, and these certificates have a few benefits, but the two main ones are um, that nodes can be linked to legal identities. So if you enter into a transaction with a counterparty, you know exactly who you're dealing with. And also that communication between two nodes can be encrypted using TLS. We can see on the left of the screen the series of steps involved in the uh, issuance and settlement of a letter of credit. So the first thing we need to do is for the seller to create a purchase order. Then the buyer needs to use that purchase order to apply for a letter of credit. Then the buyer's bank needs to accept this letter of credit application. Then once this letter of credit is in place, the seller needs to add a bit of lading and ship the goods. The seller's bank will then pay the seller. The buyer's bank will pay the seller's bank and the buyer pays their bank. So let's start with the first step, which is the creation of a purchase order. So here on Lockmar Exporters screen, and you can see here um, the fields that we want to fill in for the creation of a purchase order. So the quarter data model is completely flexible, so these fields can have any types and as many fields as you like. For the purpose of the demo, we're going to auto complete them. Um, but you see here we need to choose a buyer. So here we're going to click, and we can just choose any other node on the network based on the network map. We know exactly who we're dealing with when we enter into this purchase order agreement. Now if I click to create the purchase order, that purchase order will be um, added to the ledger of the seller. You can see it there traveling. And also to that of the buyer. So if we scroll down here at the bottom, we can see the transactions that the seller is aware of. So, so far this is one transaction creating the purchase order. If we go to the buyer screen, then we'll see this exact same transaction, the creation of a purchase order. 
But if we go to another screen, like that of the seller's bank, we can see that they're not even aware of this transaction. They've got some other transactions there related to you know, uh, collateral they've pledged in the past, but nothing related to the purchase order. Now that the purchase order has been created, uh, the next step is for the buyer to apply for a letter of credit. So let's open up the buyer screen here and log in porters. So they can see the purchase order here. We can check that out, see all the fields and we can apply for a letter of credit based on this purchase order. So remember, a letter of credit is a legal agreement between the buyer, the seller, and their respective banks that the movement of the goods and the payment will go through the banks for trust purposes. So you can click to apply for a letter of credit, and um, you can see here the set of fields are completely different. You know, you can have fields of any type you want, of any and as many as you want. So the quarter data model is completely flexible. And we're just going to auto complete those fields again. But again, we need to choose the issuing bank and the advising bank. So we're going to pick those guys out from the network map. So here we're going to choose First Bank of London as the issuer bank or the buyer's bank, and Shenzhen State Bank as the advisory bank. So we're now ready to apply for this letter of credit. And there we go. We can see that moving. And if we scroll to the bottom, we can see this transaction. So again, we've consumed that purchase order to uh, lock the purchase order and create a letter of credit application. Now, see here that there's signatures on all the transactions. So in this case, the transaction's got two signatures. The first is from the buyer and log importers who's just applied for the letter of credit. And that signature serves two purposes. On the one hand, um, the letter of credit application can no longer be modified without breaking analog importer's signature. So the letter of credit application can't be tampered with by the bank, for example. On the other hand, the bank has proof that analog imports has applied for this uh, letter of credit because its signature is on it. So analog imports can't deny having made this application. We've also got a signature from the notary pool. So notary pools are just services on the quarter network that um, prevent double spend attacks and they can use any consensus algorithm they like. Now, um, Corda um, transactions also have smart contract logic. So if, for example, here we try and apply for the same letter of credit again off the back of the same purchase order, then we get an exception here. So it says that there's a fail requirement because the input invoice must be marked as consumable, but instead it's marked as unconsumable or locked. We've already used this purchase order to um, create a letter of credit, and so this won't go through. Um, and again, we can see, so obviously as the applicant, analog importers, we can see this letter of credit application here. If we go to our bank, we're going to see the letter of credit application here as well. We can see the letter of credit application and the um, letter of credit application down here as a transaction. But if, for example, we open the uh, seller's bank, we're not going to see this transaction, right? They're not even aware of of the existence of this letter of credit application yet. As the buyer's bank, we can now go ahead and accept this letter of credit application. So if we go to the First Bank of London screen, this is the buyer's bank. We can see the application here in all the various fields, and we can click to approve the letter of credit. So again, we distribute it to everyone. In this case, we're sharing it with everyone because both banks and the buyer and the seller are all interested in this new letter of credit. Um, and if we look at the transactions, we can see here that we've consumed this letter of credit application and purchase order and created a letter of credit. So this is how the quarter ledger evolves. Um, we consume some existing states on the ledger, in this case the application and the locked purchase order, to create some new uh, outputs. Um, so in this case, we've consumed the application and the purchase order state to create this new state, the issued letter of credit state. And again, we've got a signature, this time from First Bank of London, to prove that they can't renege on the letter of credit and to prevent tampering with the letter of credit. And we've also got a signature from the notary pool to prevent double spends. Now that the letter of credit is approved, we can get the seller to actually um, load the goods on and ship the goods. So if we go to the seller's modal, lock more exporters, um, we can see the letter of credit up here. We can look at the details. And so currently, this letter of credit has a status of issued, but the next thing you want to do is create a bill of lading that will um, actually correspond to 
the loading of the goods onto the ship. The bit of lading is a document that indicates who's the current owner of the goods. So we'll click the bit of lading, again autocomplete. And when we click uh, submit here, then we can see that the um, state of the bit of lading has been updated to laded. And if we look at the transactions here, we can see the letter of credit has gone from a state of issued to a state of laded, and the bill of lading has been created. Now, if we try and add that bill of lading twice, and try it. But again, there'll be a contract verification exception. The smart contract will prevent this. And here, there's a failed requirement. There's a requirement that the input letter of credit has a state of issued, whereas our letter of credit already has a state of laded, so this transaction will fail. And now if we ship the letter of credit, so we kind of ship the goods, we'll see this uh, letter of credit or this update be distributed on the ledger. We can see here the status has been moved to shipped and this uh, update would have been communicated to everyone else on the network. So everyone who's monitoring the letter of credit will see the same status. So if we go to the buyer screen now, for example, what we'll see is again, a status of shipped here and they've also seen the transactions. At this point, the bill of lading has been added to the letter of credit and the order has been shipped. So what needs to happen next is that the seller's bank needs to pay the seller in exchange for the bill of lading. Then the buyer's bank needs to pay the seller's bank in exchange for the bill of lading. And finally, the buyer will pay their bank in exchange for the bill of lading. And that will complete the letter of credit. And so at that point, the buyer will have the goods, the seller will have the money, and the whole thing will be unwound. So let's start by having the seller's bank pay the seller. So we can see here the letter of credit with the status of shipped. And if we look at the bit of lading, we can see the details here. And we can see that it, the uh, bit of lading is currently owned by the seller, Lockmire Exporters. If we click pay seller here, then the seller's bank will pay the seller. And you can now see here that the bill of lading is held by the seller's bank, Shenzhen State Bank. And if you see here, you can see that this is an atomic um, cash versus um, bill of lading transaction. So either the cash um, belonging to the seller's bank and the bill of lading belonging to the seller is consumed um, in exchange for cash belonging to the seller and a bill of lading belonging to the seller's bank. Either that whole transaction goes through or not. It's um, completely atomic. It's impossible for the cash to be transferred, but the bill of lading to not be transferred. It's also important to note that transaction finality is instant. So as soon as the uh, Shenzhen State Bank and Notary Pool sign this transaction, there's no possibility of that transaction being reversed. Now, if we try and pay again, we get an exception again, this is the smart contract logic at work. So here we're saying there's a requirement that's failed, the seller must not already have been paid. So here the seller's already been paid by the seller's bank, so this transaction can't go through. Next, we get the, um, the buyer's bank to pay the seller's bank. So we can go here onto the uh, buyer's bank's modal, First Bank of London, and again here we can see the letter of credit we can see that the beneficiary has been paid. If we view the status, we can see that the bit of lading is currently owned by the seller's bank, Shenzhen State Bank. And now if we click pay seller's bank, the cash will be transferred and the bit of lading will move to the uh, buyer's bank. So if we go and check the bit of lading here, we can see that the first bank of London now owes the bit of lading. And now the final step is for the buyer to pay the buyer's bank and the entire letter of credit will be unwound. So the buyer will have the goods and the seller will have the money. So here we are on the analog importer screen, the buyer. We can see that the bit of lading currently is owned by the buyer's bank, First Bank of London. And now if we click settle, we'll see that the bit of lading is unwound. Um, so... Uh, um, oh, okay, so um, we've actually made a mistake here. So uh, 
we're getting an insufficient balance exception. Um, so we actually forgot to give the buyer any cash. Um, okay. Um, but actually, it might be all right. And the reason it might be all right is because in Corda, all the applications run side by side on the same global network. And in our case, because we're dealing with banks, it just so happens that the banks have a cash issuance core app installed as well as a letter of credit core app. Um, these were two core apps developed completely in isolation. The letter of credit core app was built by members of the R3 consortium working together. The cash core app was built by a software consultancy called Giant Machines. It was inspired by Project Jasper, um, a Canadian member project. And despite the fact that they were developed completely in isolation, well, the cash generated by the cash cord app will be completely usable as an input to the letter of credit cord app. As we said, the cord network is completely free of silos, both in terms of who can transact with whom, but also in terms of which cord apps run where. So we can issue that cash now. Um, I'm about to click the Powered by Corda button um, and just keep an eye on the steps on the left-hand side. So you can see here, a new step's dropped in and we're going to click this to loan cash from the buyer's bank to the buyer. So here we can do a transfer, choose analog importers here, uh, in the amount of $2 million, which will be enough to settle this letter of credit, and US dollars. And if I click submit, it's going to be transferred. And you can see here the UI is completely different, um, the fields might be completely different, the, um, the, the various options of what you can do with cash are completely different, and yet this cash will be usable as an input. All that's left now is for the buyer to pay their bank and will have completely unwound the letter of credit. So the bill of lading will have moved from the seller to the seller's bank to the buyer's bank to the buyer. And meanwhile, the cash will move from the buyer to the buyer's bank to the seller's bank to the seller. So let's open up the buyer's modal now. We can see the letter of credit here. We can see that it's currently held by the First Bank of London. And now if I click Settle, the cash is transferred. We can see that the issuer has been paid and we finally unwound the entire bit of lading. So this demo has shown some of the key features of blockchain solutions generally. So the guarantee that two parties who see the same data see the exact same version of that data, the ability to transact directly without intermediaries, and also the ability to exchange value on the ledger. Um, but it also highlighted to some of Corda's unique features, features that address the challenges of other blockchain platforms. So we saw that data was only distributed on a need-to-know basis. So if you remember the when the buyer and the seller agreed that purchase order, neither of their banks were aware of this initially. But at the same time, even though we have this privacy, we're operating in a single global network where assets can move across use cases and across nodes. There's no trapped assets, no islands. Um, all the nodes on the network are well known. There's a network map that lists the names, the legal identities, the ports on which you can contact each node. So you always know who you're transacting with. Um, transaction finality is instant. There's no need to wait for confirmations. And finally, you can model complex workflows. So stuff like DVP or the example we just saw where we had to coordinate various processes among four parties.